Welcome back to the Accessible Art History YouTube channel. For this week's video, I'm adding another episode to my Artist Spotlight series. Vincent van Gogh is one of the most beloved artists in history, despite not being commercially successful during his own lifetime. He was able to transform the pain from his struggles with mental illness into beautiful works of art that resonate across generations. Despite his fairly short life, Van Gogh died via suicide at age 37. He left behind more than 2,100 work. To learn more about this incredible man and his painting, then keep on watching. Vincent van Gogh was born on March 30th, 1853 in Zundart, the Netherlands. His family was fairly well off and van Gogh had a number of siblings. He was closest to his brother Theo. The two brothers wrote frequently to each other and Theo financially supported his brother for much of the latter's adult life. Van Gogh was described as a quiet and serious child. He did not enjoy school, but his mother did encourage his artistic talent. Before he pursued an artistic career, van Gogh tried out a few different paths, including an art dealer and a priest. However, he wasn't satisfied with either them. Van Gogh moved to both London and Paris before finding his true style. In Paris, he fell in with the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist, but his big breakthrough came when he moved to Arles in the south of France. Originally, Van Gogh moved there for his health, but soon fell in love with the town. It had beautiful light and landscape inspired him to create over 300 works. Besides his works, Van Gogh is also famous for his struggle with mental health. Many people have tried to diagnose him posthumously, but I don't feel comfortable speculating on what he could have been afflicted with. He did write of his symptoms, which include poor digestion, hallucinations, nightmares, manic episodes, depressive episodes, stupor, absent-mindedness, impotence, insomnia, and anxiety. Van Gogh did spend some time in psychiatric hospitals, including after the famous ear cutting incident. Sadly, Van Gogh died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound on July 29, 1890. Today, he is best remembered for turning his pain into beautiful works of art. His paintings are often at the center of many famous museums' collection. In fact, there is an entire museum dedicated to his work in Amsterdam. It is a great legacy for a great man. The Potato Eaters was painted by Vincent van Gogh in 1885. It is a dark and brooding work, in contrast to his other famous works, like Starry Night, which I'll talk about later in this video. Van Gogh was motivated to show peasants as they really were, living in the dark and in a small cramped room. He actually sought out, quote, ugly models to keep the work as realistic as possible. The room is lit by a single source of light, barely strong enough to show the viewer the dinner scene. Van Gogh chose to use earthly, deep color palette. This not only mimicked the land that the peasants worked, but the potatoes that they are eating for dinner. It's authentic and raw, showing the harsh reality of peasant life. Van Gogh was quite proud of this work, despite the criticism that it drew. People thought it was too realistic and depressing. It even split his family. His brother Theo didn't like it, but his sister Wilhelmina thought it was his finest piece. The Night Cafe is another one of Van Gogh's most famous works. He painted it in 1888 while living in Arles, France. It features an actual cafe that Van Gogh frequented. It's called the Café de la Gare and is located at 30 Place La Martin and was run by Joseph Michel Guinot and his wife Marie. This piece is fairly flat, lacking in three-dimensionality, which shows the inspiration that Van Gogh received from the Japanese woodblock prints. I think that Van Gogh described this scene best in a letter to his brother Theo. I have tried to express the terrible passions of humanity by means of red and green. The room is blood red and dark yellow with the green billiard table in the middle. There are four lemon yellow lamps with a glow of orange and green. Everywhere there is a clash and contrast with the most alien reds and greens in the figures of the little sleeping hooligans in an empty dreary room in violet and blue. The blood red and yellow green of the billiard table, for instance, contrasts with the soft tender Louis XV green of the counter on which there is a rose nosegay. The white clothes of the landlord, watchful in a corner of that furnace, turn lemon yellow or pale luscious green. In my picture of the night cafe, I have tried to express the idea that the cafe is a place where one can ruin oneself, go mad, or commit a crime." End quote. This shows us that Van Gogh wasn't neutral about his subject. His personal feelings were that reflected in his art. This was quite different from the Impressionist style that was popular at the time. It also helps to explain the harsh lighting and depressing feel that he painted into the scene. Starry Night is clearly Vincent Van Gogh's most famous work. He painted it in 1889 during his stay at the St. Paul Asylum in saint Remy, France, after the famous ear cutting incident. This piece is one of many that he made of the view outside of his window, but it's obviously the best known. Van Gogh also wrote of this to his brother, stating, This morning I saw the countryside from my window a long time before sunrise, with nothing but the morning star, which looked very big. The swirling lines and rich colors are the hallmark of this work. It paints a romantic vision of the calm night, 
where nature is at her best. The cypress tree on the left-hand side dominates that space, creating a link between land and earth. The exaggerated size of the moon adds an otherworldly element, as if this landscape only exists in our minds. Vincent van Gogh, despite his short life, made a huge impact on the history of art. His works are filled with new techniques like swirling brush strokes and flattened perspectives and emotional complexity. The fact that he was able to pour his pain into his works to create something beautiful for the viewer is something that we should all be thankful for when viewing his art. Mm -hmm.